This short training video will take you through the steps of planning a total knee replacement in Materialize OrthoView. Having opened the patient's study, the first step is to select the required procedure for the patient. In this case, we are planning a total knee on the patient's right side. On the left of the screen, select the required images from the study list using the control key to select multiple images. Once the procedure is added, the software will then move on to the next step, scaling in this case using a marker to calibrate the image. As there are two images, each is calibrated independently. After calibrating the image, the software automatically moves to the appropriate step for the chosen procedure. On the left hand side of the screen you will see a number of tools or wizards. In this case these are the specific wizards designed to help with planning a total knee arthroplasty. The purpose of these wizards is to allow the user to mark and measure key points on the patient's anatomy. The software can then use this information to do some initial sizing and positioning of the implants as well as provide useful metrics such as valgus varus angle. Starting with the lateral view, there are two wizards available, one for the femur and one for the tibia. To use one of the wizards, tick the box to see the graphical elements of the wizard appear on the screen. To reposition the wizard, place the mouse anywhere on the general outline. This allows you to move the whole wizard. Placing the mouse on a specific point allows you to move that individual point. For the femoral wizard, start by placing the main control point on the anterior face of the femur, at the base of the femur just above the condyles. The second point is used to orientate the wizard so that it aligns with the anterior face of the femur. The third point is used to create a box around the condyles, aligning with the bottom and back edges of the condyles. To orient the tibial wizard, e select either one or both of the points on the vertical line to position it parallel to the posterior edge of the tibia. Use the two points on either end of the box section of the wizard to position this so that it sits across the tibial plateau. On the AP view, starting with the femoral AP PA wizard, position the rectangular box so that the four corners are on the edges of the femur, picking out the longest straight section of bone available on the image to create the anatomical axis of the femur. Move the horizontal blue line so that it is positioned across the base of the condyles. The angle of this line relative to the anatomical axis, that is the valgus angle, can be adjusted by clicking on the preset number to enter the required value in the box. For the tibial APPA wizard, position the rectangular box so that the four corners are on the edges of the tibia. Again, picking out the longest straight section of bone available on the image to create the anatomical axis of the tibia. The blue bar can be dragged down and resized using the control points on each end so that it sits across the tibial plateau. The leg alignment wizard is not used in this procedure as it requires the femoral head to be visible on the x-ray. In the AP view, both wizards have an option for displaying medial and lateral cut depths. To use this option, right click on the wizard and the pop-up menu will display the option for femoral or tibial cut depths as applicable. Measurements start at the pale blue line of the wizard, which represents the cut line for the implant, and the opposite end can then be dragged to the top of the bony area to measure the cut depth on each side. The values for the cut depths are displayed in the results panel on the left-hand side of the screen, along with all other measurements generated by the wizards. 
Once you are happy with the positions of the wizards, you can then move on to the templating stage by clicking the template or T tab at the top of each image. Here, the software will make use of the reference points and measurements taken with the planning wizards to do some initial positioning of the implants on the image and also highlight some suggested sizing. Your template choices with all the appropriate sizes and options appear on the left hand side of the screen. If you are using a small or low resolution monitor, these panels may be small and difficult to see. If this is the case, the blue triangles on the corners of each section allow you to minimize and maximize individual portions, allowing more space for the other areas. The software will use colors to highlight various aspects of the panels as follows. The dark blue highlighted number is the suggested best fit size based on the measurements taken with the planning wizards. The software also highlights in a lighter blue color one size more and one size less than that suggested value. The red shading indicates any areas where the software requires you to make a selection to confirm or set the value. Whilst any red shaded areas remain, the software will display a warning message at the top and bottom of the main image and the template outlines will remain in a lighter color. Once all the values have been fully set, the template outline will change to a darker, bold color. The third piece of information displayed on the left is the value in the red dotted box. This is the value currently being displayed by the software as a starting point and will be the size last chosen by you when templating with that specific implant. The default implants that are displayed will also be the implants last chosen by you when templating this type of procedure. From this point, you can now begin to adjust and modify any of the values and positions of the implants as appropriate to finalize the plan for the patient. To change the implant choice, click on the graphical banner for the implant you want to change. This will then display your list of available implants from which you can make a selection. You can then begin to set and change the sizes and values of your implant as appropriate to find the correct sizing for the patient. Make sure a value is chosen for all options and that there are no more red shaded areas remaining on the left hand side. As well as removing the red shading, you will also see that the warning message disappears and the template outline changes to a darker bold color once a value has been selected for all the options. While you are able to pick any value from the largest to the smallest in the settings on the left hand side, there may be some restrictions imposed on your choice by the implant manufacturer. Materialize OrthoView will highlight these restrictions using different font types. The bold or dark font indicates valid choices. The lighter or non-bold font indicates invalid choices. If an invalid option is chosen, for example a size mismatch, the template in question will disappear and a warning message will be displayed in its place. As well as selecting the sizes, you are also able to freely move the templates around on the screen to set their final positions. To move a template, place the mouse anywhere inside the outline of the implant, then hold down the left hand mouse button and drag. Holding down the right hand mouse button and dragging allows the implant to be rotated. Corrections can be made with the undo and redo buttons available on the left hand end of the toolbar at the top of the screen. 
The template can also be moved back to its original position using the To Wizard button available underneath the template banner. If the template has an axis line running through its center, when you left click to move the template, it will only move along that fixed axis. To move the template in any direction, look for the main control point, usually in the center of the template. Place the mouse directly on this point and use the left mouse button for free or unrestricted movement. Once you are happy with the final positioning and sizing of the template, you can then complete the plan. There are three choices at the top right of the screen for saving your plan. Save, commit and close. If you do not wish to store a copy of your plan, simply select close and the work will not be saved. Both save and commit will store a copy of your plan. If save is chosen, the plan is stored in a modifiable format and can be reopened later if you wish to continue editing it. If commit is chosen, no further changes to the plan will be allowed. As well as the template image, the software will also store a full report. This report can be viewed by clicking the report button at the top left hand side of the screen. There is also an option on the main toolbar to allow selected portions of this report to be displayed on the main X-ray view. Before using this option for the first time, right click the icon to set your preferences and then left click the icon and left click anywhere on the screen to replace the report information into the image. For additional hints and tips relating to every stage of the planning process, use the Smart Help tab located on the right-hand side of the screen when using the software.